This video is designed to give you an insight into the range of liquid handling devices available to you within the biochemistry teaching lab. Secondly, to help you choose the appropriate device for the amount of liquid you are dealing with. This video is especially concerned with selecting the correct pipettment for the volume you are pipetting and how to use the pipettment accurately. Finally, there is a section on errors commonly made when first learning to use the pipettment. When dealing with liquids, it is essential to know the range of devices available and in what situation they should be used. Familiarity with liquid handling devices is essential for any experiment involving liquids. The lab manual is the most important piece of equipment that should never be forgotten. Here you can see the range of liquid handling devices available. Devices such as beakers, graduated cylinders, serological pipettes and pipettement pipettes. When dealing with liquids, it is crucial that you choose the appropriate device for the amount of liquid you wish to handle. Graduated cylinders are used to accurately measure out volumes of chemicals for use in reactions. They are generally more accurate and precise for this purpose than beakers. Serological pipettes have a range of 2 to 10 milliliters. They are filled by attaching a pipette filler to the top of the pipette, immersing the tip in the liquid, and rotating the wheel until the desired volume is within the chamber of the pipette. They are emptied by rotating the wheel in the opposite direction. Pipettmen are used to accurately measure liquids of volumes of less than or equal to 1 milliliter. Selecting the correct pipettmen is very important, as the P1000, P200 and P20 each have a unique range of use. The P1000 has a range of 100 to 1000 microliters, however, it should only be used for volumes above 200 microliters and lower than 1000 microliters. The P1000 is compatible with the blue tips that are found on your bench and will not work with the yellow version of the tip. The P200 has a range of 20 to 200 microliters and should only be used to measure within this range. The P200 is compatible with the yellow tips and will not work with the blue tips. The P20 has a range of 2 to 20 microliters and should only be used to measure within this range. The P20 is also compatible with the yellow tips, much like the P200. Once again, the ranges for the P20 and P200 pipetmen are 2 to 20 microliters for the P20 and 20 to 200 microliters for the P200 and neither pipette should be used outside of this range. Understanding the scale display in the pipetment is essential to accurate pipetting. On the P1000, the first number displayed, which is red, represents thousands of microliters. The second number represents hundreds of microliters, and the third number, tens of microliters. The maximum capacity of the P1000 is 1000 microliters, and this should not be exceeded as it will damage the pipette and can result in inaccuracy for other users. The capacity of the pipette is changed by rotating the volume adjustment knob. On the P200, the first number displayed represents hundreds of microliters, the second number represents tens of microliters, and the third number represents ones of microliters. The maximum capacity of the P200 is 200 microliters, and this should not be exceeded, as it will damage the pipette and can result in inaccuracy for other users. On the P20, the first number displayed represents tens of microliters, the second number displayed represents ones of microliters, and the third number, which is red, represents tens of microliters. The maximum capacity of the P20 is 20 microliters, and this should not be exceeded. When using pipetment, there are a series of steps you should follow to ensure accurate pipetting. Firstly, check the pipetment plunger button to make sure you're using the correct pipetment. Step 2. Rotate the volume adjustment knob until the digital indicator reaches the desired volume. Then, firmly place the disposable tip on the end of the pipetment. Then, press the plunger to the first point of resistance. Step 5. Hold the pipetman vertically and immerse the disposable tip into the sample. Release the plunger button slowly to its original position. Wait a couple of seconds to ensure that the full volume of the sample is drawn into the tip and then withdraw the tip from the sample. To dispense the sample, place the tip against the side wall of the receiving tube and push the plunger down to the first stop. Then wait 2-3 to three seconds and depress the plunger to the second stop in order to expel any residual sample in the tip. While the plunger is still depressed, remove the pipetment from the tube and allow the plunger to slowly return to its original position. Finally, discard the disposable tip by pushing the ejector button. Recognizing the approximate volume of liquid in a pipette tip will aid you in accurate pipetting. Using the P1000 and P200 to measure 200 microliters, you will see that in the P1000, 200 microliters only fills one fifth of the blue tip while in the P200, 200 microliters fills the yellow tip to maximum capacity. Keep this in mind when you're conducting an experiment as it will help avoid inaccurate pipetting. Disposing of the tips in the correct waste receptacle is important, as a cluttered bench will lead to errors. 
Grasp the pipette firmly and press the grey ejector button located on the side of the pipette. Ensure the tip is pointing at the yellow bucket on your desk and press down on the button. After the class you should empty the yellow bucket into the correct bin at the top of the lab. This section should help you avoid errors commonly made by students. Getting the number scale in the pipette wrong is an error commonly made. On the P1000 the first number which is red represents thousands of microliters, the second number represents hundreds of microliters and the third number represents tens of microliters. On the P200, the first number displayed represents hundreds of microliters, the second number represents tens of microliters, and the third represents ones of microliters. On the P20, the first number displayed represents tens of microliters, the second number displayed represents ones of microliters, and the third number, which is red, represents tenths of microliters. Not choosing the correct pipetment is an easy error to make when you first start to use pipetment. Using the example of 200 microliters again, Using the P1000 to measure this amount is incorrect. Essentially, the pipette tip should be as full as possible, as this will reduce the chance of error. If the P1000 you are using has a tip less than one fifth full, you should be using the P200. Remember the range of the three pipette men, and you should have no trouble choosing the correct pipette. Section 3 Using the plunger incorrectly. The correct method for pipetting is to depress the plunger to the first stop or point of resistance. Immerse the tip in the liquid and slowly release the plunger to its starting point. Depressing the plunger to the second stop before inserting the pipette tip into the liquid is incorrect and will result in an excess amount of liquid, as shown here. Releasing the plunger too quickly will result in inaccurate pipetting and may cause liquid to be drawn into the barrel of the pipette, which may then have to be repaired. Not putting the pipette tip into the centre of the liquid may result in errors in pipette. Specifically, pipetting from too near the meniscus may lead to air bubbles in your pipette tip, as shown here. While pipetting from too near the bottom of your test tube may lead to a non-homologous sample of the liquid. To ensure accurate pipetting, Position the tip towards the centre of the test tube and release the plunger slowly. Remember, never rotate the volume adjustment knob past the upper or lower range of the pipetman as this will damage the pipette. Never use the pipetman without a tip in place as this can ruin the inner workings. Never lay the pipetman down on its side when it contains liquid. This liquid could run into the pipetman, rendering it useless. Never let the plunger snap back after withdrawing or ejecting fluid as this can damage the piston. Never immerse the barrel of the pipetman into the fluid. Always use a disposable tip.